At the end of this week's Pasha, Moshe tells the Jewish people that God is Hakel HaNeman. He's trustworthy. You can put your trust in Him. If He makes a promise, He'll keep a promise. Shomer HaBrit VaHachesed. He guards the covenant and the kindness that people do for a thousand years, and in certain instances, for two thousand generations. Not only that, says the Torah, but Hashem even repays the wicked for the good that they do, and He repays them promptly. So we have two different cases which are juxtaposed against one another. On the one hand, Hashem takes kindness that is done by people and transfers that kindness to the next generation and the generation after that. It's almost as if there is a store of goodness that is held in abeyance in credit and is then delivered from one generation to the other. That's for the good that people do. Where there are wicked people, Hashem is also fair. And if they do good, He pays them. And He makes sure to pay them in this world so that all of their payments are done and in the next world there is just punishment. On this point, Ramban Nachmanides asks an interesting question. He says, why is it that we see wicked people who continue to live? The Torah says that if they do good, Hashem pays them, and He pays them their good that they do in this world. But it's a difficult philosophical concept for us to get our heads around. How is it that we can see wicked people flourishing? They continue to live. They continue to do that which is wicked. And Achmanides brings a very interesting Midrash. And, he's, and the Midrash says that when you see wicked people flourishing or continue to live, there are only three reasons why that is so. The first reason is maybe they will do teshuva. Maybe they will repent. Where do we see an example of this? With Pharaoh. Moshe came to Pharaoh and he said, let the Jewish people go. If you don't let them go, there will be a plague. He gave Pharaoh the opportunity to repent. The first five plagues, Pharaoh hardened his own heart. He didn't repent. It was only from the sixth plague onwards that Hashem actually hardened his heart. He took away from him the opportunity to do repentance. But technically, sometimes God will delay punishing a wicked person because there is always the possibility that a person may repent. The other explanation is that sometimes God keeps a wicked person alive, not because of any particular merit that that wicked person has, but because they may produce a righteous person. And Nachmanides gives a number of examples. You have the wicked king Achaz of the southern province of Yehuda, an incredibly wicked person. And yet Hashem allowed him to continue to be alive because he produced an incredible son, Chizkiyahu who was the most righteous king of the southern empire. Or another example, there was a man named Shimi ben Gera who cursed King David and deserved to be put to death. He publicly cursed the king. And yet, King David left him alive. Hashem left him alive. Why? Because ultimately, from the Shimi would come Mordechai, the hero of the story of the book of Esther. So sometimes, yes, we see wicked people living. We can't understand why it is that they're alive. Perhaps it's because ultimately they will have righteous descendants. And the third reason is that sometimes Hashem keeps wicked people alive because He has to pay them for the good that they do. Even though they may be wicked, but it's very unlikely that there's no person in this world who doesn't do something that is good. And let me illustrate this to you with a fascinating story. During World War II, during the Holocaust, one of the great rabbis in America who initially was from Lithuania was Rabbi Aaron Kotler, the founder of the great yeshiva in Lakewood, New Jersey. And Rav Aaron Kotler was passionate about saving as many Jews as possible during the Holocaust. And he would not allow himself any sleep or any rest. Whatever he could do to save Jews, he would do, even if it meant bribing the Nazis. But he found that there was a brick wall against him. And whatever he tried, people were not prepared to help save Jews in Europe. Eventually, it was brought to his attention that there was a certain Italian mafia boss who had connections back in Italy and Sicily, and with his connection, he could save a number of Jews in Europe. Well, it wasn't really usual for a great rabbi, a great Rosh Hashiva, to engage with people like this, mobsters, but he had no choice. He had to do what he could to save Jews. It was pikuach nefesh. 
He had to save lives. And so it was that Rav Aaron Kotler, accompanied by some of his students and perhaps admirers, went to the home of this mafioso boss, this mob boss. And there he came in, and it must have been a little bit awkward because Rav Aaron Kotler only spoke Yiddish. This man perhaps spoke Italian and English, but they found a way of communicating. And Rav Kotler pleaded with him, please, he would do whatever this mobster, whatever money he would be required to pay, he would give it in order to save these Jews. The mafia boss said to him, look, you can't give me any money. I'm a very rich man, but there's one thing that I'd like to ask of the rabbi. Give me a blessing. I would appreciate a blessing. As crazy as it sounds, some of these mafia bosses were very religious people. And Rav Aaron Kotler at that moment thought, what blessing can I give this man? Wealth? He has wealth. Children? He's got a big family. There's one thing that every mafia boss wants, and that's to die at an old age in his bed. Because mafia bosses were always prone to being assassinated by rival bosses. So he gave this man a blessing that he should die as an old man in his bed. Of course, the mafia boss answered Amen, and he assisted, and he was able to save a number of Jews in Italy. Many, many years passed, and one day a Cadillac pulled up outside the yeshiva in Lakewood, New Jersey. And a man came out. Clearly, this wasn't a Jew. This was somebody in a very flashy suit, Italian shoes. And he came and he said he wants to speak to the Rosh Hashiva Ralph Kotler. Well, at that stage, Rav Aaron Kotler had passed away. But his son, who was now the Rosh Hashiva, Rav Schneer Kotler, came out and he spoke to this man and he said, yes, you know, could I help you? And he said, I'd like to speak to Rabbi Kotler. He said, well, my father's passed away, but I am now the Rosh Hashiva. He said, I want to tell you something. Your father came to my father and my father has just passed away now. At a very advanced age, he passed away in his bed peacefully. And I'd like you to give me that same blessing. So if we consider that story, we're absolutely sure that that mafia boss was a wicked man who did many terrible things. But there was one good thing that he did in his life. He saved those Jews. And for that, Hashem kept him alive. So we have to think twice before we judge people, before we look at a person and say that that person is absolutely wicked. They may have done some good. And that is why Hashem is keeping them alive. I wish you a Shabbat Shalom.